Hey guys, in this Give Me Five or More video, this Give Me Five or More is about Give Me Five or More YA standalones that you need to check out. So stay tuned. Real quick, before we get started, I wanted to thank everybody who alerted me that my Twitter link was not working. It is now working. It will now take you to my Twitter page instead of taking to Oblivion. So definitely click and follow me on that and Instagram and I will follow you guys right on back. Personally, I prefer standalones to trilogies and series, but in young adults, sometimes it's really hard to find standalones because there are so many trilogies and series. Even when I was doing the research for this video and I had made my list of standalones that I wanted to tell you about, I had to start crossing some of them off my list because I found out, ta-da, they are making a sequel to it or they've decided to make it into a trilogy. So that was kind of annoying. I'm like, okay, can't talk about that, can't talk about that. But I still have 11 books that I would like to share with you before they decide to make a sequel of it because at this point right now, they're standalones. Hopefully they'll stay standalones. The first book I want to tell you about is The Walls All Around Us by Nova Rinsema. I would call this a paranormal mystery if I was forced to put it into a genre besides YA. If I had to sum up this book in one sentence, I would say this is about ballet and juvenile detention centers, which most of you are probably saying, what? I need a little bit more information than that. Don't worry, I'm gonna give you some more information. This book is told in two different viewpoints that are set slightly apart in timelines. One is slightly in the past and one is in present day. The first point of view is Amber and she's in the juvenile detention center for supposedly murdering her stepfather and she keeps having these kind of paranormal out-of-body experiences that she can't explain and she doesn't know exactly what's going on. And not soon after she gets a new roommate. Her new roommate is Oriana and Oriana is in the juvenile detention center for supposedly, got my quote, for supposedly murdering two two of her fellow ballerinas. Now we know ballet can be competitive, but in this book ballet gets really competitive, like deadly competitive. But from the get-go, Amber just knows something is off. Oriana is an absolute sweetheart and she just cannot believe that this girl would murder two fellow ballerinas. You know, something is not adding up here. Our other viewpoint that is more in the present day or present time is Violet. And Violet is one of those prima ballerinas. She's a senior in high school. She wants you to know from the get-go that she has already been accepted to Juilliard and she is the most amazing dancer. And when she dances, everybody stops and just, oh my gosh, she's the greatest dancer ever. And she gets every move right and she's just absolute perfection on the stage. Eventually, Violet decides to visit the juvenile detention center and she has a very weird paranormal experience as well, kind of similar to Amber's. And once we see her paranormal experience, things start coming together and we start seeing what the whole story is for the three girls. There's gonna be a few times in the story where you're kind of going, I'm a bit confused of what's going on exactly. But don't worry, that's okay. You're supposed to be confused because once we get towards the end of the story, everything will start coming together and it will start making sense. And I tore right through this book, guys. This is a really, really good one. Please check it out if you can. I really, 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 can I say really enough, think you'll enjoy it. The next book I want to tell you about is The Hidden Memory of Objects. The author is Danielle Amato. The main character is Megan and her brother has recently overdosed from drugs, but she is finding this really hard to swallow because she didn't think he did drugs in the first place. You know, it's another situation where something just doesn't make sense. And she realizes that she's starting to develop this skill that when she touches an object, she can see memories attached to that object. She ends up meeting and being mentored by this artifact detective that has the same gift that she has. And this detective uses it to solve crimes. He likes to go and touch objects that are related to like famous mysterious crimes from the past so he can learn a little bit more or sometimes he'll find out that who they think did it isn't really the one who they think did it and he kind of mentors her and helps her come into her gift and eventually we get to find out what really happened with her brother as her gift develops this was another really great one guys I think you'll like it check it out if you can our next book is Armada by Ernest Klein after I read Ready Player One I was like I need another Ernest Klein book that book was so amazing and Armada was pretty amazing too liked it a lot our main character is Zach, and Zach's favorite thing to do is to play his favorite video game, which is basically a flight simulator where you are defending the Earth against alien invaders. And he loves this game. It is so much fun. Until it is brought to his attention that this game was put out to help train all the young people on the Earth, because guess what? There are alien invaders who are trying to invade the Earth, and you are actually being trained how to kill them if you play this video game. 
So now Zach has to do this for real, and this book, really the way it came together, and you know, him having to realize that it's not a game, he has to now play this video game. And some people, this might be their fantasy. I know my husband loves video games. If he was told, guess what? This video game is actually real. You're actually out in space exploring, or you're actually a cowboy riding around. I don't know, I think a lot of people who play video games, this might be their fantasy come true, that their video game is now going to be real, and they're actually, you know, doing something with this video game. But this was a long book like Ready Player One, but like Ready Player One, you know, you tear right through it. It was so interesting that I really didn't mind it being a long book. And you find out, oh, there's so many twists and turns, guys. This is a really good one. Like I said, if you read Ready Player One, or even if you haven't read Ready Player One, Armada is such a great book. Check it out. All right, our next book is Before I Fall. It's by Lauren Oliver. Now, this has been made into a movie. The movie is okay. I liked it. I actually own a copy of it, but it's more of a three-star, where the book was definitely a five-star for me. Our main character is Samantha, and she is a very popular girl. It's her senior year. She hangs out with the coolest clique of girls, and it's Cupid's Day, which is, I guess, kind of related to Valentine's Day, where people can send roses to different people, and at the end of the day, there's this really cool party that she gets to go to and party with all of her friends. But unfortunately, when her and her friends are driving home, they're in a horrible car accident, and she dies. But that's not the end of the story. She dies, and then she wakes up, and it's the next day and it's not the next day it is Cupid's Day again yes this is a bit like Groundhog's Day and there's been a few other movies and books that do this where you have somebody reliving the same day over and over but this is by far my favorite book where we have a character who's reliving the same day over and over now of course at first she does what all of us would do she tries to prevent her death wouldn't you try to prevent your death she learns very quickly that she cannot prevent her death, that that is not why this day is repeating over and over again. Of course, this book has its funny moments because, of course, if you realize that whatever you do, it has no consequences, wouldn't you do a few crazy things? I mean, there's no consequences. Whatever happens is going to be erased. So we do have some really funny parts where she kind of gives in to certain urges and, you know, I'm going to go kiss that guy. I've always thought he was cute. I'm going to kiss him. It doesn't matter because tomorrow it'll be all erased. But after a while, she really starts to dig deep and think, why has the universe given me this opportunity to relive this day over and over? If it's not to prevent my death, what is it trying to prevent? Is it trying to change her? What's it trying to do? And the story when you realize why she's reliving this day over and over is so beautiful. I mean, it was very touching and just heartwarming when you realize why she's been given this opportunity. So Before I Fall, even if you've seen the movie, check out the book. This is one of those books I think would have made a really great Netflix series, but unfortunately with the movie, they had to cut so much out. And part of the greatness of this book is all the different experiences she has when she's experiencing this day over and over. And the movie, you know, it just doesn't quite grab it the way the book is. I mean, seriously, seriously, this book is so great, guys. Please check it out if you can. You will love it. All right, the next book I want to tell you about is The Female of the Species. And I think I've mentioned this before. It might have been in my top 10 books of 2018. This book is told through three different perspectives. The main character is Alex, and Alex has done what a lot of people would probably do in her situation. Her sister was murdered, and she went out and killed her sister's murderer, and she got off. She did not get caught doing it, so she basically got away with killing her sister's murderer. But by killing her sister's murderer, it's changed her, you know? You go and kill somebody, it's going to affect you in some way, and she knows it's affected her. It's made her kind of more violent. It's just, it's really affected her in a deep way, and she knows it, because it concerns her that she doesn't regret killing this person, and it concerns her that she was able to kill him so easily. Our second perspective is PK, which stands for Preacher's Kid, and this is a friend she meets when she is volunteering at an animal shelter, and they become very good friends. And our third perspective is Jack, who is the star athlete at their high school. He's the guy that every girl wants to be with, but he wants to be with Alex. He likes Alex so much, but for some reason he doesn't understand why she keeps him at arm's length. You know, what is she hiding? You know, it's not like she's telling everybody, hey, I killed somebody. So he's trying to get close to her. She's trying to figure herself out. We go through their senior year and so many things unfold in just a really, really great story, really great character development. Oh, I love this book so much and I think you'll love it too. So if you get the opportunity, please read this book. 
The next book is The Dead Queen's Club by Hannah Capon, and yes, I have spoken about this book before, but not all of you have probably heard about it. This is a retelling of Henry VIII, but it's set in a high school modern day. In this book, Henry is one of the most popular boys in school. He even has the number eight on the back of his football jersey. All the girls want him. The main character is Cleves, and she represents the fourth wife of Henry VIII, because when he was married and he divorced, Cleves, that was the most amicable divorce or annulment, I'm not sure, that he had, and they actually became friends in the true history of Henry VIII. Cleves thinks Henry is so great, he is her best friend in the whole world, but she knows and she is noticing that there is something really weird and strange about his dating history. He basically has six major relationships during this high school experience, and um, yeah, two of them end up dead, so um, that's a bit suspicious. Cleves wants to believe the best in Henry. Like I said, he's her best friend in the world, but she has to start looking at him a little bit differently and listening to other people who have theories about what might be really going on. And you do not have to know the history of Henry VIII to enjoy this book. It's a, it stands by itself. But if you do know a little bit about Henry VIII, it makes this book so much better. I'm not saying go check out a bunch of Henry VIII books at the library. Just Wikipedia. Just, you know, get a, in your head an idea. He had six wives. He beheaded two of them. Just get a little bit of the history in your head, and I think it'll make this book even better. So the Dead Queen's Club can't go wrong with this one. Now, the next two standalones are from the same author, Hannah Jane. The first one is called The Dare. Our main character is Brianna, and her best friend in the world is Erica, and part of their friendship is they like to do little dares and pranks with each other. It's just part of what makes up their friendship. Unfortunately, a year earlier, one of the pranks and dares they do is they decide to jump off a pier, and Brianna resurfaces, and Erica, unfortunately, does not resurface and is assumed dead. Now it's a year later, Brianna is trying to pick up the pieces. She's trying to deal with all this guilt. She has gone to a new high school so she can make new friends and really put this behind her. And she's starting to kind of do that until she gets a weird Twitter post that looks like it's from Erica. Then she starts getting weird emails and really weird voicemails. And she has to sit there and wonder, did she die or not? I mean, did she resurface? Is this like the biggest joke ever and the biggest prank ever? Ha ha, I was dead, but no, I wasn't really. I waited a year just to play a prank on you. I mean, she does consider that because that's part of this girl's personality that she thinks that she is capable of. Or does somebody know more to it? Is somebody just being a jerk and messing with her? She doesn't know, but in this book, she finds out what's going on. And this was just a really fun, fast read that I think you guys would like. The other book that Hannah Jane wrote that I really liked was Truly Madly Deadly. Our main character in this one is Sawyer, and she is the envy of every girl in school because she is dating Kevin Anderson. And Kevin Anderson is just the coolest, cutest boy that everybody wants to date. And oh, she's the lucky one who snatched him up. But unfortunately, Kevin dies in a tragic accident, and not soon after, she opens her locker and she finds a note that simply says, You're welcome. What's really going on is they really did not have the healthiest of relationships, but she didn't think anybody else knew that their relationship could be a little bit toxic, so she's a little bit confused. She's starting to go, wait a minute, did someone kill Kevin? Did someone do something to make him die? You know, somebody messed with his car? Like, what is going on? And the person who supposedly thinks that they have helped her, um, they're also now trying to stalk her. So she's trying to figure out who is this and she knows it's probably somebody she knows in her group of friends. So she's like looking at all of her different friends going, who could this be? And she, you know, has to think and look back into her memories and go, did somebody see something one night? You know, what is happening? There's definitely a trigger warning for a little bit of, I guess you would say domestic violence or, you know, violence between boyfriends and girlfriends. I mean, just a little bit, not, not a lot. It's not real heavy into that. This was also a very fun and fast read that I enjoyed. So if you enjoyed The Dare, you'll enjoy this one. And if you enjoyed this one, you should enjoy The Dare. All right, the next book is Brightly Burning by Alexa Don. Yes, this was in my April wrap up, but I wanted to bring it up again. This is a retelling of Jane Eyre in outer space. Yep, in outer space, folks. This is in a time period that is set a little bit into the future where we are going through another ice age on Earth. So the people on the Earth have either perished 
or they've been lucky enough to get on one of the many, many spaceships that are now orbiting the Earth or orbiting the moon. And basically, everybody's just waiting, hoping that the Earth becomes, you know, where we can live on it again. Stella is on a ship that is really poor, really run down. Everything is rationed out until she is lucky enough to get a job as a governess on the Rochester. And the Rochester is a really, really nice ship. She is just so impressed when she sees this ship. Just, oh my gosh, a dream come true kind of ship. But there's some craziness going on on this ship. It seems like somebody is trying to kill the captain. She's hearing weird laughing and weird noises when she's walking down the hallways. But then, you know, she looks around and there's nobody there. And she's going, am I losing my mind? Like, what is going on? Um, I had not read Jane Eyre, but in the middle of reading this, my mother told me the story of Jane Eyre. And this really does follow quite closely so you can read this if you have not read Jane Eyre but if you have read Jane Eyre I think you'll enjoy this retelling of it like I said Jane Eyre in outer space and Alexa Dine did a great job with this one really really love this book the next two books are also by one author Megan Miranda which I'm sure many of you have heard me rant and rant about how much I love Megan Miranda she writes mystery thrillers for both young adult and adult I read them all Come Find Me was in my April wrap-up. This is a story told in two points of view. We have Kennedy, whose brother is in jail, awaiting trial for supposedly murdering their mother and the boyfriend, even though Kennedy doesn't think that adds up and her brother is even capable of something like that. And then we have Nolan, who two years ago, his brother disappeared. His family was just at a park, you know, having like a picnic or something. The brother goes off with the dog and is never seen again. So two really weird mysteries here. And through sort of supernatural means, I'm not going to tell you how, but sort of supernatural means, these two come together and together they work together to find out both the answers to what is going on with the murder of the mother and whether the brother really did it, and also to figure out what happened to his brother. Lots of twists and turns in this book. It was really, really good. I highly recommend it. And I also highly recommend The Safest Lies. And this, I think, was in my March wrap-up or my February wrap-up, but it was in one of my wrap-ups. The main character in this one is named Kelsey and her mother was a famous kidnapping victim and Kelsey is a result of that kidnapping and I think you know what I mean by that you know sometimes girls get kidnapped and when they get rescued unfortunately they are pregnant by some things that happened during their kidnapping you know what I mean and Kelsey's mother even though Kelsey is now a teenage girl she really has not got over what happened to her she is absolutely paranoid she has every alarm every lock that you could possibly have on the house she will not even leave the house she is that stressed out that she has that much PTSD and you know that's upsetting to Kelsey but she loves her mother and she knows she kind of deals with it then her mother goes missing for a second time and while she and her friends are trying to figure it out they realize somebody is coming after them while they're in this armored house so while there are people trying to break into this house they're trying to figure out what is really going on because it turns out that Kelsey's mother wasn't completely honest and so uh, forthcoming with what really happened during her kidnapping and Kelsey has to come to terms with that and figure out what is going on? And this is a really great book too. So I recommend both of these books, The Safest Lies and Come Find Me. And I think she has one or two other young adult mystery thrillers. She has an adult book called The Missing Girls and The Favorite Sister. I don't know. Anything by Megan Miranda is really good. I love all of her mystery thrillers and I will continue to read anything and everything she writes. Just really, really great. Real quick before I do my booktuber shout out, there's a new booktuber named Eloise Reads. And last year she only read LGBTQ books for the entire year. That's all she read. And she wants to do a readathon in June. She also has a blog and she wants to do a readathon in June where people read just LGBTQ books or just, you know, read a bunch of LGBTQ books. You don't have to read just those books, but I will link her announcement video in the description because like I said, she's new. She doesn't have a whole bunch of subscribers. Not that I have tons of subscribers either, but I have a little bit more than she does and I wanted to help her get the word out. So I will link that in the description. And my booktuber shout out for this video is Books for Life. Oh, I love Books for Life videos so much. Her name is Emily and her videos are just really, really engaging. She does some book box openings as well that are the opposite of mine. She is actually a lot more dignified and she will actually do voiceovers and really show you the details of what she has. She also is just very engaging. I mean, when she speaks, you want to hear what she says. She speaks with passion about the books she loves and her channel. I mean, she just has a really great channel. She's one of those other 
people that I can sit there and say, I think I've watched every video that she's done. Um, really, really great. Can't believe I haven't called her out before. Definitely check out Books for Life. Oh, she is so wonderful. So that's all I have for now. I still need to do that guilty pleasures tag. I promise you it's coming along with the Reese Witherspoon book club review will be next weekend. I just got her May book. Oh, it looks incredible, guys. Really, really good. I cannot wait to share that with you. Also, please, once again, don't forget to hit my Twitter link now that it's working. Please also follow me on Instagram. And like I said, if you follow me, then I will follow you and we will begin this beautiful social media relationship. So that's all I have and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.